Okay, welcome everyone. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 25th of January, 2021. Reminder that we live by the Jenkins Code of Conduct, so it'll be nice to each other. Uh, here's what I've got for topics. Oh, let's see, Vlad, we need to note that here. Uh, Jenkins Contributor Summit and how we deal with the documentation track as two, oops, as two proposed topics. And then we had pull request progress and encouraging new contributors from underserved communities. Any other topics we'd like to add? Oh, oh actually in pull request progress, the Docker uh, install instructions updates. Update uh, merged. Vlad, any topics you wanted to be sure we were on the list? Uh, well, related to the latest uh, item that you added, uh, Mark, it's about Docker installation. I noticed on GitHub, you have wonderful repository related to Docker, Docker LFS, I guess it is called. It is under your name. And um, uh, I noticed that uh, some branches uh, I had of the master, so they never, uh, merge into master. So maybe you can just, well, uh, whatever you want, uh, spend a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds describing the process about oh. this. Uh, yeah. Uh, because usually I'm merging into master, but I noticed that, well, branches are ahead of the master by many, many commits. And so it's kind of interesting. Uh, just if you want to share your. Sure, happy to. Uh, ha very happy to. Yeah, that's 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 one. That's yeah, absolutely. Let's put it on the list. We'll have some fun with that. Okay. Anything else that you'd like on the list? Um, no. I noticed that. Well, it is uh, to uh, Docker. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, LTS two six three three right now is yes. released already and um oh and you know what i did not update the <laughs> that's embarrassing that's great i mentioned it and then have failed to update those the install instructions oh okay <laughs> well i know it's uh, download download we, is updated already <laughs> right but uh blue ocean 1.24.4 has released update completed so that one i was proud of but but i missed the major release of a, a new lts version today so that's that needs to go onto the checklist add to the uh release checklist or automate it until automated <laughs> Good. Any other topics to add to the list? Okay, then let's go ahead with the session. I'm going to put a quick hyperlink here. Okay. So I had, if it's okay, I had put top topic this concept of a Jenkins Contributor Summit because it's something we've done before, but this year's needs to be different. Uh, we've done a Contributor Summit before where we use the fact that many Jenkins, or some Jenkins contributors, many is probably too strong, 20 to 50 Jenkins contributors commonly find themselves at FOSDEM in Belgium each February. It's a large open source software conference. And, and at that conference, we would gather together the day before and have a contributor summit where we talk about the Jenkins project, Jenkins development, and the Jenkins roadmap. Well, this year, FOSDEM will be entirely remote. And it'll be February 6th and 7th, Saturday and Sunday. But we realize we don't have to tie ourselves to happening the day prior to FOSDEM. 
So we're going to try an online format for the Jenkins Contributor Summit this year with a format that looks like this. So we'll start with an introductory session that we encourage everyone to join who wants to participate in any way in the, in the summit. So all contributors are welcome, encouraged. It'll be a 90 minute session where we'll introduce some concepts, uh, give a summary of how things are going, where we're working and where we're not working. So this is for everybody, but then beginning with that, at that moment on day one and continuing through the closing session, we intend to have separate sessions in small blocks of time throughout 24, the 24 hour periods uh, at times that work for the participants. So if someone is in the Far East, like uh, Raihan Shol, for instance, is in Singapore, or we have some contributors in Japan, they or in China, they can meet during their working day and have conversations about topics like Chinese localization or about the developer experience as they see it. Others who are at different time zones can meet on topics in their time. The idea being these segments are subsets of the whole group that people can use to explore ideas and identify things that the Jenkins project would, they would like to help and things that the project can do to help them as they help Jenkins move forward. Then we'll end with a closing session, a two hour block uh, encourage everyone to attend it on day three, and that will include a summary of all the parts and pieces that were presented. So here are some of the suggestions that have gone into the, what should the opening session look like? And we've got proposed presenters, etc. Notice there's one topic right here for us, documentation. And so the intent here is to invite those of us who are in office hours to come to this and we'll host sessions relative to documentation in this three day period. Uh, then to give a hint, yeah. So any questions so far on, on the idea, topics or, or comments, suggestions? And we will be advertising that this is for current contributors, experienced contributors, right? Actually, this is for anyone who's willing to contribute. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to particularly be experienced, but you, the intent is that you're willing to continue contributing. So you're coming, not just asking for things, you're coming saying, here's this area where I plan to contribute. I'd like to coordinate my plans for contribution with others who are like-minded. So how do we handle the mix if if we're not restricting it to experienced contributors? We could get people who need to learn the very basics about how you do this, how you work in this environment. Ah, uh, so so if they if they come in with with no experience, they say I've never done this before, we'll we'll rely on the session leaders to keep it focused on where should we be going, not on how to introduce them to to being part of Jenkins. Now we do have a topic around, let's see, where is it called? It's the, the developer onboarding track here that may, may focus intense, it's proposed that it may focus intensely on what does it take to onboard new contributors? Uh -huh. And in the documentation track, we know we need to do a better job of onboarding. So we've got that as a, as a possible topic as well. So, I've never done any of this before, but I'd like to, but I have no idea how to do it. Mm -hmm. Do we have something we tell them, you know, this is not the place you're going to get that information. I guess, well, for docs, we tell them show up at the, the weekly, this meeting. Right. And we'll exactly. you through. Right. If someone, if someone shows up and says, Hey, I need, I need coaching on how you do this thing. We'll, we'll deflect them away from the coaching and say, Hey, this is focused on, vision and direction and plan more right. than it is on coaching specific contributors. And please stick around and participate and listen in that and then come right. to these other sessions and we'll coach you up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> I could imagine us having Google Summer of Code students 
coming in and saying, hey, I could use the onboarding. Uh oh, looks like I've got to switch my headset. Sorry, my headphone set just told me it's getting tired and needs to be recharged. Ah. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, oops, I'm going to switch from one sys audio system to another. I'll be offline briefly. Okay. Vlad, are the winds blowing where you are? Don't know if you can still hear me or not. Ah, there you are. We were about to yes. discuss the weather. No. Okay. Yeah, winds winds are blowing a little bit, yes. And and yeah. uh rain is going on a little bit. Yes. Oh you've got rain. Oh it's sunny here, but windy is okay. uh rain well, dry that. Is that yeah. any better? It it was fine before, yeah. but this is no, good. Still not. Yes. Mm -hmm. No. That's why. Yeah. Uh yesterday was the rain. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And more, I think tomorrow night or something. Oh, really? I didn't. Check. They've, oh, yeah. We this one's going to be big. They're talking seven to eleven inches over here. Wow. They've evacuated the mountains. Really? Oh, okay. wow. Now I can hear. Yeah. A lot of surprises on different, different areas, in different uh, yeah. areas on different levels. Yeah. All the microclimates. Yep. Okay. So okay. can you hear? Me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, so wait a second. Except I've got microphone is the wrong one. Is that better? Can you hear me that now? That made you louder. Yes. Great. Okay. Sorry about that. My, I didn't realize I was getting low on batteries. Okay. It happens. So um, the idea here is that we use this, this summit as a way to gather people who are interested in advancing and contributing to Jenkins and help them coordinate their efforts. Excellent. Now, as as one where there's some cross coordination going on, there's a proposal to do a security track that may actually involve um, people from infrastructure, from the security team, core developers, uh, plugin developers, talking about how they approach, how we approach heightening security in in the Jenkins community. Yeah. And Liam Newman has agreed to that he's willing to participate in the pipeline authoring track. That oh, wonderful. Yeah. So we're and we'll continue. I'll continue <laughs> recruiting, trying to find the right people to to be participants in this to help us advance the state of things well. Now that leads us to our next topic, this one, which is a proposal for how I think we ought to prepare ourselves, prepare the doc SIG for the Contributor Summit. And what's happened is Daniel Beck asked a good question. He asked, hey, Mark, do you plan to uh, restructure the documentation so it's clear, uh, better, better, more consistent, and more evenly laid out? He noted that, hey, we've got, particularly with many things that are copied from the wiki, we're getting just things that are arriving sort of in a scattered fashion. And so the proposal was that I discussed with Zenob and with Kristen in, on Thursday was, what if we assembled a structure discussion where we talk about an out, an invent, do an inventory of the documentation. And that includes, let's, let's note that it's includes the www.jenkins.io and wiki.jenkins.io in the inventory. So include them both and then uh, begin an outline of which information be belongs where. The idea being, okay, if we frame an outline for information we've already got, that will give us a good hint of where, where things need to go and is this is the documentation structure reasonable and correct? Um, are the two of you willing to assist with that kind of an exercise? Absolutely. Yes, it really needs to be done. 
what um, about a yeah. subject that I absolutely hate, which is writing standards? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. I'm not sure what to do with that, though. So we've got some we've got some standards. Uh, so writing standards. And so is this like a style guide? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah, style guide. Because the the half asked, I hear that you and Tammy have an agreement to steal from each other when you want to, and you won't go after each other and you won't coordinate, et cetera. Um, Tammy has put together a very good style guide for our docs. And sure. there's no reason why the open source community has to stick to those, but there would be advantages to us. It might be worth us contributing this and saying, does anybody have any objections? Ah, uh, okay. I mean, it's, you know, there's a few things that are missing. Um, there's a couple things that aren't necessarily how I would vote, but but it's decent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so that's a that's an interesting place to to consider as a as a starting point. We've got we I think we have in the contributing guide uh, has some style information already. So that would be a, a good place to start the conversation. Yeah, we good. should I, we should compare that and see where you know. Uh. Yeah, good good idea. Hadn't thought of a style guide. I like that a lot. But it, you know, some place I get when I start reading this stuff, I kind of want to start screaming. Have you guys ever heard of a topic sentence? Oh, careful. Engin engineers like to give you a paragraph of history, and somewhere towards the end of it, they'll tell you what they actually plan to talk about. Uh -huh. And uh, it's like third grade, guys, third grade. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, that, I think that's a that's a good that's a good good item to do, and I would love to have a proposal there on hey, see if Meg, would you be willing to check with Tammy if she's willing to allow that to be reused or used as right, a yeah. document? Yeah, I'll confirm with her. I can't believe that she wouldn't, but we need to confirm. So. Mark, and just to clarify, we're trying, uh, my understanding initially, uh, we were trying to get rid of Vicky Jenkins IO. Is it still uh, our goal eventually? Or we're trying to keep both Jenkins.io and Vicky Jenkins IO? Good, good question. Yeah, so let's, Vicky migration plan. Uh, we are definitely, uh, removing wiki.jenkins.io as as content moves to better locations. Right. So plugin docs move from wiki into their GitHub repository into the plugin GitHub repository, and Jenkins core docs. From the wiki to www.jenkins.io. Are we going to have a question? history section? There's some out on the wiki, there's a bunch of stuff that's really old. It should not be showing as current documentation, but it's mm -hmm. still kind of fun to go back and, you know, when Pipeline was brand new or when these things were brand new, what did they say about it? And I don't know, should uh -huh. we just bury that or should we have, you know, history, historical wikis or something? Well, so so that's a that's a good question. Tim Jacom has actually asked the question. There is a wiki migration plan document that I've started. Let's see, Jenkins plan, here we go. And this thing, one of the comments on it from Tim was, hey, should we just capture the content um, of this thing as static pages, no longer editable because it's, it's already read only, mm -hmm. right? Should we capture the static pages and then turn off the wiki engine so that all we've got is a bunch of static pages and um, 
then we could migrate content from the static pages and leave the static pages as the historical documents you were mentioning. Yeah, that would work. Um, right now, the wiki site is, is read only, therefore it is effectively static for all users. Right. And making it purely static pages is is a technical challenge, but it's only a technical challenge. And that actually might be something that we could consider as part of the documentation summit is should we put in, see if we can find some folks with developer, developer interest who'd be willing to make the transition to convert this thing to a static site. Right. So Vlad, did that address your question? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And I I'm, just uh, oh, go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. No, uh, continue. Uh, no, I was going to change the subject. So please finish. Oh, <laughs> well, it's in general. I wanted to clarify the purpose of uh, this FOSDEM. It's only for contributors, as I understand. So people who are interested in Jenkins and trying to uh, uh, to answer some questions they may have and go into documentation and don't find documentation, could they go to this summit or this is not for those users I, who have questions I on? I don't think it will meet their needs. They, I would hope that those kinds of, hey, I'm missing this information or missing that, in, missing that information, we use as input to the documentation inventory review exercise. Mm -hmm. Review questions and from users as input. Uh, review uh, comments in the user feedback spreadsheet mm -hmm. for Jenkins.io. Uh, I, other than the four letter words that are sometimes spread in there by people who are really frustrated. <laughs> there are other comments that can be quite useful and good guidance. I found several actually just recently there were there was a bug reported in there that wasn't hadn't been reported or hadn't detected elsewhere. Ah. So it was very helpful. Mm -hmm. So it would be fair to say that this summit is mostly for Jenkins developers, uh, not Jenkins users. Yeah, it's for creators rather than it's for creators and maintainers more than mm -hmm. it is for consumers and users, mm -hmm. right? Although yeah. anybody who's a consumer who wants to become a contributor is certainly welcome. Right, that's, that's, and that, that is, that is interesting, but I think yeah. that's less, that's gonna be less. We don't want to go out of our way to incur, we want to kind of say, probably we should point to the office hours, you know. Right, if so someone says, somewhere hey, in the, um, Okay. All right, uh, let's see. So have we any questions on the docs track? So the two of you are willing to be part of that. So my proposal then would be next Monday in our docs track, I'll bring my first draft of this, the beginnings of my docs outline and we'll talk about it and try to highlight, hey, his, here's what I've learned. Invite the two of you then to, to help me with making comments, improvements. Um, I'm assuming I'll just use a Google Doc because that's convenient and an easy way to do to do comments and corrections. Right. Um, one other question that's, and you guys can shut me up anytime you want to. Lurking in all of this is a question of audience. God, I'm going back to old. I sound like an old writer. Um, but I'm struggling with some of that. We have, my impression is that when Jenkins was first put together, whoever used Jenkins did it all and it was structured that way. But I've been struggling a little bit because we're seeing more and more of a split. Either I'm responsible for administering Jenkins or I write pipelines. And actually with administrator and managing, there's some different levels, but I haven't gotten into that. But stuff like notifications and um, credentials, and there's a lot of these things where there's an administrative part and there's a pipeline part. And should they be documented together as the technology or should that 
here's how you use credentials in your pipeline and here's how you set up credentials as an administrator. And you could make arguments either way, but I'm, you know, I'm wondering if it would make sense for us to consider and have some sort of general statement about where we want to go forward. Question. Okay, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna offer my my opinion, and I'm open to open to suggestions on it. So I've, I'm going to use as a as a as opinion a historical description. So the Jenkins documentation initially was modeled after the docs were initially modeled after after the FreeBSD handbook. Okay, yes. And that's a single book that is single book, all topics, users, administrators, everyone. Right. And about two years ago, I started thinking, oh, we need to split it. And into user and admin. And now, after about two years of thinking along that lines, we haven't done the split, just had the, the, con the concept. I'm back, I've come full circle back, and I'm now, Mark now thinks we should not split it. Not, at least not into user and admin. Because I can't find seams between information for users and information for admins in the sense that I was expecting. But make your point of pipeline creators and others is a very good distinction and one that might apply very well to, okay, separate technique and the pipeline authoring SIG might be the ideal place to decode. How do we help pipeline creators create pipelines more rapidly? Right. And there's, and it is because there is not a clean break. Um, I mean, in other technologies, there's a real clean break between the two. But well, see, for me, pipeline authoring has has some uh, other components to it that are that are tend towards less documentation and more use the code and let the code help you. Right. So there are people who still don't know about the pipeline syntax editor uh, mm. and don't know about the declarative syntax hints and things that could help them significant, be significantly more effective if they would just use them. Right. Well, I think in the in the Jenkins IO, I don't think we have a place. There's a, like how to use Maven, how to use Gradle is not our subject, but we don't tell them if you've used Maven for your builds, here's how you call those scripts. Here's the syn the pipeline syntax for calling those. Right. And right. I, I actually know where you could steal some source material for that. I don't think anybody would object if you stole it because they were pissed when I put it in the class. Okay. But, I'm not, but I'm now seeing, so I shoved it at the very end of the class and it really should be up at the front because we're telling them to use this stuff, but not how to do it, so. Yeah, and so, so I think that's an open topic and for me, that's a worthwhile one. Uh, I'm open to, to your insights though, based on that concept of audience, oops, that fingers, that concept of audience, are you okay with us continuing with single volume for administrators and people doing other stuff outside of pipeline authoring? I'm almost okay with anything. I just think we need to have someplace an agreed on strategy and okay. it, and I, you know, and I, yeah, because I mean, this is back in the eighties that was God, IEEE tried to have a, a standards group for documentation and they met for months and months. And I think about all they agreed on was that you should know your audience first. Okay. You know, and I, I think we've moved beyond that, but it's, you know, but it, it, some of it is like, you know, and maybe, and some of it is going to have, there's going to have to be arbitrary distinctions. It may be that right now we say, this is how you define a credential and you must have admin or you must have not at, you must have permissions given to you through whatever your security, your security matrix, your authorization is to do this. And then in the pipeline, here's how you call credentials to get to a resource. 
and somebody else had to have set this up and we become fairly arbitrary. In a small shop, you may be the one who goes, but if we link back and forth, it's like, it's some, it was, you know, if, if you are a pure pipeline developer, this should be done for you by somebody else. Right. And, you know, which is, it's an arbitrary, I mean, we're telling companies how to organize their people, but you need some structure, so. Vlad, your comments, you've, you've got uh, your experience in long time professional documentation, just like yeah. Meg, what, what's your, what are you offering? Well, yeah, I agree, actually, Mark, that it is uh, sometimes very hard to distinguish uh, if the content referred to the user material, to developer material, or to administrators. And I guess right now we have, even in Jenkins.io, two kind of uh, administrator-related sections. One is system administrator, and the other uh, I even forgot how we call that administrator, not system, but something else, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, system administration, and there is administrating yeah. Jenkins also inside. Ma manage, yeah, managing Jenkins is kind of, uh, yeah, administration. So it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, very, uh, I, I guess it would be, easier to find material in, in case if we'll keep everything in one kind of volume so people go to that specific to this specific jenkins.io and after that they uh search inside um uh, uh yeah this is like uh unrelated question about the search uh in documentation uh, should we discuss this or uh, inside inside this FOSDEM or we should just don't touch this subject at Actually, all? Actually, I think, I think that is a brilliant topic because a frequent comment on the, on the online, on the online feedback is, hey, where's your site search? I need to find a specific keyword and, and Oleg had even done a mock-up so, so I think it's worth, yeah, so let's, yes, I, what I call site search as a feature, yeah, adding site search. Absolutely, I think that's a brilliant one, very good. Because before I was thinking that absence of site search is a feature of our documentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, no, that's just. <laughs> I, I I like that. I think I think that is intensely valuable. And and it could use someone who has a different set of skill sets, right? There, we've got people who can contribute by writing and describing what they've experienced the site search thing is more of a technology and deployment thing than it is a writing thing. And so okay. I, I think that's this, um, in fact, we've got another one that's just happening right now is additional improvements to the, um, let's, let's, let's call this one a different topic, improvements to pipeline doc, um, pipeline step generator and how to encourage more improvements. Mm -hmm. So the, the reason there is make to your pipeline authoring question or the pipeline authoring challenges, there are times when I'm sitting inside of a pipeline step. For example, uh, let's go to the pipeline steps reference and let's pick one that I know about this one Okay, so here is a description of a pipeline step. However, if I down at the bottom, oh, it's gone, good, okay. On every other page on Jenkins documentation, right here in the bottom left corner, there is, a, is an improve this page link that will let me improve it. It's not here, but this was this page helpful. All it does is let me complain about it, not let them not take them to the place where they could actually improve the text that's written here. 
And this is coming from a source repository, so it could be a, a link. So that's that's one that's a, a, a candidate for a programming task around documentation generation. Mm -hmm. Oh, now that's really sad. What did? Oh, it's in the in right. It was in the contributor so document. So add links to page on the steps pages. Because we get lots of complaints. Hey, give me more, more example, better text. Like, well, hey, here's the improve this page. You provide us an example. Mm -hmm. Good. Um and we do have some search, for instance, in plugins, uh, Jenkins.io, which is part of um, the project. There is search, well, uh, and it actually works. So and there is, yeah, and and it it is it is well suited to uh, things that well, it, it only searches inside the the pipelines. The plugin site, but absolutely, it is mm -hmm. it is there. Mm -hmm. Plus browser based control F in case if we have a very right. long. <laughs> right, right. In, in in if if you have to, you use the you use the the classic way, right? Is there an easy way if I'm looking at a page to find out what issues have been filed against that page? There is not. Um, I would find that useful, but that may be yeah. just me. Oh, that's, that's an interesting thought. The number of issues currently, that's a, that's a good suggestion in terms of contributing, contributor onboarding, uh, finding the page to fix, finding the, um, Link and finding the link that takes you to the to the page. So what we've got right now is we have improved this page, but it's at the bottom bottom corner. Uh -huh. And one of the suggestions had been, okay, let's let's take this let's take our example here, installing Jenkins. I'm in installing Jenkins on Docker. I'm here on this thing, and I'd like to improve some phrasing. Well, there isn't an immediately obvious way here on the thing I'm seeing. This hover tet hover shows me a hyperlink. What if there were a hover pencil right next to it? Right. Oh, yeah. That would take me to, to the GitHub page. Yes, if I scroll down. So if I scroll down, I can at the bottom of the page, find improve this page. And it will take me to a page that represents this. In this case, Vlad is fully aware it doesn't actually help because of this include. Mm -hmm. Right, it, the, because we have documentation reuse going on here, that specific example, improve this page even, isn't even as helpful as we'd like. But that's a place that we could encourage contributors better. Yeah, and all this is sort of a wish list to be prioritized. I don't know if this would be the top right. priority, but. I, yeah, me neither. Yes. Okay, so and I've been I've been awfully just scattered here. My apologies. Here's the back to our agenda. So we talked we've talked about the contributor summit. Anything else? Any other questions or topics there on the contributor summit as we prepare for and get to the next steps there? That will keep us busy. Okay. So Vlad, we had injected this wiki migration plan. Anything else that you'd like to discuss on that topic? Um, 
Well, this uh, this is one of the things definitely removing uh, Vicky Jenkins. So, well, we clarify here that we are going to remove this uh, in the future, and it is going to be distributed among different locations. I guess those locations should be defined later, and. Um, Right. Um, and we can use tool for the immigration, which is kind of nice utility or tool, which every contributor may become familiar with, which helps. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next topic then, we had pull request progress. We've got an open pull request on skating Jenkins on Kubernetes still from Google season of docs. Uh, that's one that I've got to work with Kristen Whetstone to learn what I've done wrong and why I didn't, why it's, the steps aren't quite working for me and then we'll We'll merge it. Docker install instructions. Now, Vlad, you had asked about this one. We've got about 15 minutes. Are there other topics? Because this one could spend a long time with me, with me droning on about what the concept is and why it's why it's doing that. The one that's left past that is mine, and I have no report. I posted something to somebody and they haven't responded. So okay, cool. So so you're okay if we spend the next yeah. day. Okay, all right. Let's talk Docker ifs repository. Okay, so the Docker Docker LFS repository is- Oh, it's LFS, okay. Yeah, right. large file support. Oh, okay. So so let's, let's take the concept first. So I want to be able to, um, Mark wants to test um, with a real Jenkins server. So that was that was the inspiration for this thing, uh, but I want to test in many environments. Mm -hmm. um, trivial setup. Mm -hmm. uh, trivial teardown, so I can I can turn it off very quickly, mm -hmm. and uh, absolutely repeatable. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was configuration as code. In this case, store the Jenkins definition in a repository. And I initially did it without using the configuration as code plugin. Ooh. I was just storing XML files. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what I developed was a stack of stack of configurations, one that inherits from the other. Mm. From its basically from its predecessor. And the the intent was, okay, I've got LTS as a base branch. Base branch, actually, let's start with the base branch master. Mm -hmm. Master is exactly, exactly the Docker, the Jenkins Docker repository. Mm -hmm. Nothing changes. It's a, and then the first level in is I called LTS, which is master refined to a specific LTS version. Then there's LTS with plugins, master with my set of plugins, mm -hmm. plugins I like. Now at this point, this ends, 
this is the public repo. Mm -hmm. So this thing contains no secrets, no secrets, nothing sensitive. Then the next concept is a private repo that is based on the public repo. Mm. And it includes LTS with plugins and credentials, mm -hmm. and then LTS with plugins, credentials, and agents. And all kinds of agents, all kinds of agents, agents. Yeah, so well, so and that's that includes so this thing includes secrets. It includes things that you re would really, in a perfect world, never put into a repository, but I needed a place to put them and I put them there. It includes secrets, it includes agent definitions. It includes job definitions. Actually, each of the levels includes job definitions. Mm -hmm. So if, if something is a public thing that can define a job, it, it's in there. Now, it's so been job useful. Means a freestyle John or is the pipeline also a job? Both. So freestyle, pipeline, matrix, uh, it's pretty much got every kind of job in it. And, okay. and the end result actually is this. Okay, so what we see here, this is the thing I manage as code and it's got, let's look first at the agents that are connected. So the agents include two um, ARM servers on Amazon Linux, a Windows computer, two FreeBSD computers, CentOS 7, CentOS 8, Debian 10, Debian 9, SUSE 15, Ubuntu 18, Ubuntu 20, Debian or FreeBSD, Windows, and Ubuntu, a power PC, a system 390 mainframe. Whoa. Um, yeah, a, 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 an NVIDIA, uh, what do they call it? Nano, which is a is a, an ARM processor with a GPU attached. And then <laughs> Oracle Linux, some OpenBSD, OpenSUSE, some Raspberry Pis, uh, et cetera. So- No vax. Sorry, no Vax. You're right. I, I missed not having a Vax because I don't think Java runs on a Vax. So yeah, ah. good, good point. But but the idea was, okay, this thing is a, a an intentionally maintained environment where I can experiment with Jenkins in all sorts of places and ways. Mm -hmm. Then the concept goes further with, okay, each of the each of these for instance, the Git plugin needs to test various hosting providers. So I have sample jobs for many different Git hosting providers that check various forms of credentials. So they check to see that it can clone from those places. Um, mm -hmm. I've got jobs that build the Jenkins plugins that I maintain or that are important to me. And these are GitHub organization or these are GitHub multi-branch pipelines so that the Git plugin, for instance, here are all of its branches and all of the things that I care about on it. So I can see code coverage reports on the, mm -hmm. the Git plugin. So that's been helpful having my own production Jenkins instance. Then the other really, I thought elegant technique here is this repository called the Jenkins bugs repository is has one branch per bug that I'm trying to verify is a bug. And by uh -huh. now, after multiple years of doing this, you can see that I've got a lot of them. Mm -hmm. There are something like 150 or 200 of these jobs that are used to test and each job is intended to test for itself, is the bug fixed or not? Mm -hmm. So, so Mark, yeah, go ahead. No, go I, ahead, was, I was, uh, my intention was, uh, initial intention was to fork 
this repository and duplicate the work that you were doing because I found, well, it's an interesting concept. But now I realized it is a result of many years of research and development that you had done and you put it in this repository, plus you have private repositories, a repository, at least one. Uh, so in case if I'll fork your wrapper, uh, even with some um, branches, it will not work without this private. And plus, Actually, you... okay. But so I hope it, I hope it would work. I originally created it with the intent that others could fork it. Really? <laughs> the more the more I work well yet yeah, so so certainly you I won't I won't grant anyone access to the private stuff right because it's right. got my credentials right. in it but the right. public things the public things that are here not only can you fork it but I would love to hear the results from somebody who did up to this point it's been my personal wild experiment and that's all it's been I'm not sure I have any evidence that anyone has ever done anything with it except me Right. But and we are doing, mm -hmm. I guess you are doing this, you are trying to establish your infrastructure and hosting on your private, uh, uh, on your private domain and uh, private, well, what you are using, right, for your, for your testing purposes, uh, markway.net or something like this. Sort of, sort of. Well, and that's, that's where this thing shouldn't know about, particularly the public repository here, should not know any more than it has to about my specific network. I see. So I see. now it, it does, and there are some embarrassing places where I'd say, for instance, let's look at this one. It knows that, oops. There are some scripts in here that know that my network is once network 172 no, and yes i i apologize but but if someone else were to work on this that would be a great okay it's my perfect excuse then to say oh uh you want want to take this out and we need to replace it with something else and that would be perfectly reasonable <laughs> right but i found it very interesting uh what you did because usually people are using branches to merge into master and you are using it in different way, organize this hierarchical structure. And so every branch can kind of master plus extra uh, features or extra things that you put there. Yeah, very yeah. interesting concept. Well, and, and that same, that same treating, treating branches as a stack on top of something else also happens in this other repository in this Jenkins bugs repository that I've been tracking right in my in my Jenkins bugs repository it's the same kind of thing where each attempt to verify a bug is an independent branch that will never merge to the master right mm. they are they are and it's it's the same thing it's like oh branches don't have to always merge to to a central location and in this case it's helpful and in this one it's helpful that they don't merge yeah mm -hmm. so your your but your your observation is correct this this a, a repository that is or a branch that is 4000 commits right. ahead of master is quite odd <laughs> yeah, yeah. We should, you should file patent for this mark and maybe well uh, <laughs> no, actually, because because this is exactly the concept that this concept of a patch stack is exactly what the FreeBSD people do and what mm -hmm. I think OpenBSD does with their package, their package system, where they they say you can you can rebuild packages in FreeBSD and they do it by taking the original code from somebody else, layering a little bit a little bit of a patch on top of it and then build it. So that's all this is, you know, this is just that same thing. I see. <laughs> There's, it, this is, this is certainly nothing that, that innovative, but it's, it's, it's solving a problem that I have and letting me test, for example, just this weekend, I was testing, where is it? I was testing, 
this thing. No, I was testing this one. Yeah, I was testing Jenkins using Java 11 instead of using Java 8. And I was checking all of my agents are still well behaved and trying a new version of Java, Java 8 update 282 instead of 242. And those kinds of things allow me to very rapidly assess, oh, is, is this new thing we're evaluating useful and helpful? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, so, so um, again, you are welcome to fork the Docker LFS repository. And, and I'm proud to say that this Jenkins bugs repository, there are other developers in the community who are using a similar technique now. I know of at least one. So, so it's not that this is the only place that this is happening. Other people are using similar things. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are at about at our end. Was there anything else that we needed to go over in terms of either the Docker LFS repository or other topics? All right, so look forward to checking with you. Vlad, I will also submit a pull request within the next few minutes to do this one. And I'm gonna submit the Jenkins 2.2, Jenkins 2.277 change log uh, due today because it will release tomorrow. So I'll submit that and hopefully you'll see it later tonight or others can review it if you're not available. Great, thanks everybody. Recording will be posted in probably an hour or two. Thank you.